Hello everyone and welcome back to the multiplayer FPS tutorial series. Today we're going to be covering spawn points as well as void death. To start things off, the first thing we want to do is go into our game scene and make a new empty game object and name it spawn manager. Make sure that the transform is reset and then we're going to make a child of it and name it spawn point. In order to better visualize where the spawn point actually is in the scene, let's make a child capsule of it. Then make sure to remove the capsule collider because this is just visual. Next I'm going to make a material and I'm going to call it spawn point and I'll just set it to the color red. Drag that material onto your spawn point to make it stand out in the scene. Then let's turn the spawn point into a prefab so that we can duplicate it around our scene in wherever we want the players to be able to spawn. I'll just put one in the corner and then I'll press Ctrl D to duplicate it. I'll move it over to the other corner and then Ctrl D again and I'll put it over there. Now we have the spawn point positions all complete, but I want the player to spawn with a rotation too. And we can't really see this right now since it's just a round capsule. So let's go into our spawn point prefab and add a new cube as a child of the capsule. I'll scale this down a bit so that it looks like kind of like a VR helmet on the front of the capsule just so it's easy to tell which way it's facing. I'm going to duplicate the spawn point material and just name it spawn point face and then I'll make it blue. Drag that onto the VR headset or whatever and then now that we're in the game we can rotate our spawn points to face where we want the player to spawn facing. And just for kicks I'm going to move this one on top of this box here. Now that we're done with the visuals, let's add a new script to our spawn point prefab, just named spawn point. Let's open this up in Visual Studio. I'm going to select everything here and delete it. Then I'm going to make a serialized field game object graphics field so that we can reference that in the inspector. And then in void awake, we'll just say graphics.setActive false. And this is just going to make it so that whenever we start the game, all the spawn points hide their visuals. Because I only want these visuals for designing the levels. We don't need them in actual gameplay because then players would just spawn camp. So back in Unity, let's just assign the capsule to that graphics field in the inspector. So now if we start the game, you can see that all the spawn points disappear, but only the graphics disappear. The spawn points are still there. Now that we've got the spawn points in place, let's go to our spawn manager and add a new script to it, and we'll just call it spawn manager. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. This script will just be responsible for actually giving players their spawn points. So let's make a public static spawn manager instance so that it can be referenced from anywhere. And then in awake, we'll assign that instance to this. Now let's make an array of spawn points at the top. And then in awake, we will just assign that array to get components and children spawn points because all the spawn points are children of this spawn manager object, so we can get them all really easily. Then let's make a new method down here, which will return a transform and we'll call it get spawn point. And this will just give the player a random spawn point to spawn with. So let's write spawn points, open square brace, random dot range, and then we'll go from zero to spawn points dot length to just get a random spawn point from the array and then we'll put dot transform at the end because our array is of spawn point classes and we'll just get the transform from that. So now that that's done, let's go into our player manager script and we can actually get the random spawn point to spawn our player at. So in our create controller method here, we're going to replace this position and rotation with a spawn point. So let's put transform spawn point equals spawn manager dot instance dot get spawn point. And then in here we can just replace vector 3.0 with spawn point dot position and then quaternion dot identity will just be spawn point dot rotation. Now if we go ahead and start the game you can see that we will spawn in a random number of the spawn locations and if I stop the game and start it again we will spawn in another random one. Now right now there's another issue where if we jump off the map we will start falling forever. So in order to fix that, we're just going to make the player die when they go below a certain Y level. In our player controller script, let's just go to the bottom of our update function and then we'll say if transform.position.y is less than negative 10F, we'll just die. And that'll also give us an easy way to test our new spawn point system because we'll be able to kill ourselves without another player. So if we go ahead and test that out, we'll create a room 
And if I jump off the map here, you can see that I will respawn in another random location. And I can keep doing that. And since we have only three, we're going to spawn in the same one occasionally. So if I die, I'll just spawn in another random one. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, thank you so much to my patrons, Mikels, Ojack Frost, Neil, Benzito, Dottie, Helix, Mike Hawk, Orchidy, and X Zippy Zack X. Thank you all so much. Thank you.